Good evening and welcome to the March 27th, 2014 meeting of the Northampton School Committee. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz. We'll begin by asking the clerk to call the roll of the school committee. Ms. Blue Duvall. Present. Ms. Pam Hanna. Ms. Ann Hennessy. Present. Mr. Downey Meyer. Present. Ms. Lisa Minnick. Mr. Howard Moore. Here. Ms. Carrie Nikorczyk. Here. Mr. Andrew Shelfo. Here. Mr. Ed Zahowski. Present. And Mayor David Narkowitz. Present. So, you have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, this meeting was uh, originally scheduled for uh, one primary purpose. That was the um, ongoing discussion of the FY 2015 budget. So, our primary agenda item tonight is uh, uh, both a budget and property subcommittee update and a discussion on the FY uh, 2015 budget. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know how we wish to proceed. Um. I believe that you chaired the subcommittee meeting. Do you wish to you do your report first or after? Whichever way you'd like. Well, Mr. Moore, I, I defer to you. I think she's important. It's really pretty straightforward. We met last week. Um, Mr. Scott presented us with a, a, I don't know what level of draft it was, but it was the draft of the budget. I think it had a few alterations since then, um, but it's essentially what was presented. Um, I think the most straightforward way to proceed would be to have Mr. Scott present this budget rather than us doing a version and then doing a version and leave it open to everybody for questions. I think the superintendent has some opening mm -hmm. remarks. Yes, I just wanted to introduce the uh, entire school board to Don Scott, whom I've appointed as the interim business manager. Um, a little bit about Don. He was 21 years the business manager for the Frontier Regional in the 38 school districts. So he's well experienced in preparing budgets and uh, also in um, monitoring those budgets throughout the year. Uh, he did five a, five a year, every year, uh, for each of those school districts. Um, he's been kind enough to come out of retirement to help us with the proposed FY15 budget uh, here in Northampton. Um, a couple of remarks. We are pleased to bring you this budget this evening. It's obviously a change over the past years um, in which we're not looking to lay off personnel uh, or cut items, um, but rather to start the process of adding back and um, adding some new items um, over the previous few years. <coughs> we want to thank the voters for the override, uh, which they approved last July. And we also want to thank the mayor for his efforts in finding additional funding for the schools. It appears that Northampton has turned a corner um, and indeed that's wonderful news and in light of that fact um, that you'll be selecting a new superintendent soon I think it's really advantageous that you have your budget under control and you have some really good programs we're going to be able to add in um, I want to also um, say that from an outsider's perspective um, I really think the mayor has done a, a, a remarkable job in balancing the needs of the community and I think the students and the community at large will be well served with the budget that we're proposing this night, tonight. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Scott, who's going to go through the budget with you. Thank you. I'll just give a little bit of a history of how it got developed. Um, we were fortunate enough to have some parameter guidance from City Hall um, to the mayor's office. And it started out with a about a two and a half percent looked like something that was preliminary but something that was doable and we had a list of uh, I shouldn't say wants needs that weren't in the budget they were above level service but they still were needs and we put those to the side and, um, and we fit a couple in and um, at the two and a half percent increase level um, that was just about a level service budget. Then we had about another 50 or 60,000 we could put on top of that. And we took from our list and we put some in um, by priority. And a little, little while later, as things got a little clearer with the, uh, in the mayor's office, we were told go ahead and do a 3% budget. So we moved some more things in. And we still had uh, a smaller list, but they were contained within the budget, the, the bulk of, uh, of what we wanted to do, and that list is on your fr first page here. And finally, uh, we got the, the third call that was, well, why don't you just get rid of your list and put it all in the budget? So we did. 
Um, so we're sitting here now with, um, with about a 3.4% increase. Um, it contains the bulk of the things that administration thought were important. And uh, our budget's up $856,000 um, over the year before. And again, on the first page here is, is the list that was actually um, above and beyond a level services budget. Um, so we're heading the right way here. Um, and again, up top, we, we were having, you know, available for other uses, and, and it, it all went back and forth, and we finally were able to contain it all in the budget. Uh, so there is, uh, it's, it's there. It's the, what we really wanted to, to see there. Um, on the second page, it's a, a listing of expenditures by the service classification. Some of these you probably haven't seen. I've just been doing this sort of thing for my tenure as a business manager, and everyone has different ways of doing it. But, and I broke out our, our budget and compared it to last year's budget by, by the uh, service classification. And as you can see, our budget's at 20, 26364146 up 856000 or 3.36%. And down the bottom is a breakout by school. And the people that were at the um, meeting earlier and have seen this, this page has changed. It was just a classification change uh, down to the bottom. We had one school negative, and it was because we had moved a salary from there to uh, from one of the schools into the district-wide budget, and it was kind of skewing what really happened. So this is apples to apples. This is the only page that has been changed. And again, you can see each school, how it's, how it's affected. Um, and up top, I just wanted to hit on a couple of the highlights. I know it's hard to see, but it, I like to do it this way because you can see um, the areas in which each service classification has changed and, and try to define why that has happened. And the first one, I'm just going to hit some of the major ones, is uh, four down is the human resource, um, excuse me, it's the legal line. And that's down because I guess all your negotiations are over with now and you were able to reduce the, uh, the, uh, the need for outside uh, lawyers for that purpose. Um, we also have a building technology. We have beefed up a lot of the areas. Um, this, this happens to be the teaching side of it, but we have beefed up a lot of the areas and supplies in the different departments as well, uh, especially in the area of technology. Um, teaching is, is uh, up 4.25%, and all the raises and all the contracts are contained within the budget line items. So there's nothing hanging out there. I know a lot of times it's, it was been tough uh, without um, agreements in place and people had to estimate where they were going to be and uh, but th now we we know where we should be um, we have professional development you're going to see that up because we have um, included a lot of that money um, into the different schools for um, professional development of the principals um, we've added quite a lot there um, by contract they were due some of that um, and most of the other large ones are because of these uh, staff increases that carried over from the first page. So, I mean, they're, they're all pretty explainable. On the next page is we've broken out our school choice and our circuit breaker because there are two major uh, revolving fund accounts. Um, we, on, under school choice, we start by saying the money we collect this year in the current year is the money that we're going to spend next year. That's the way it has been handled here. So we started this year in, with um, $1.8 million. Um, we're projecting in the current year to take in $1.35 million, which will be very, very close. We have the roster. Um, we're on track to spend $1.25 million, and we would end this year with a million nine hundred and sixty four thousand four hundred and seventy dollars contained in with this budget is expenditure uses from the circuit breaker i mean from the school choice revolving fund of 1.6 million dollars which will leave us with three hundred twenty seven thousand dollar balance at the end of the year and that's a good thing i think i i know sometimes it gets kind of touchy with trying to measure how much money to keep on hand in case of an emergency when you're trying to run programs and you're not doing programs because you're hanging on to money. Um, so that, that's a good sign. The circuit breaker um, it gets expended in the same year, but we, uh, 
we started this year with three hundred eighty two thousand dollars we're on track right now we know we're going to get five hundred forty six thousand dollars um, and this year we're on track to spend six hundred eighty seven thousand dollars so we're going to end this year with two hundred forty one thousand we have to do a little estimating on next year we're estimating that we're going to receive uh, about five hundred and fifty thousand which is more than about what we've been doing it's been pretty stable over the last several years and this budget contains uh, expenditures of five hundred and seventy thousand dollars of that um, under out of district tuitions we would pay a lot of tuitions with that and we'd end with two hundred and twenty thousand dollars so together you got almost five hundred and fifty thousand dollars to um, have on hand as your kind of like a free cash thing to solve on un, uh, unforeseen uh, things that might pop up um, that's about two one two point one percent of your budget is contained in those two items so I know that I come from a, a, a regional school district and to have two or three percent in in your free cash which is actually free cash in a regional district is about where you want to be so I think that this is this is it's a good reserve to have in case something were to happen and then the fourth page is just a synopsis of our total expenditures for um, with including grants and all the revolving funds and again up top in the right hand column we're going to spend twenty six million three hundred sixty four thousand that's going to be coming from the appropriation from from the city and then we have one point four million dollars in grants under these areas and then we have uh, two point almost three million dollars of uh, other funds from revolving funds and again most of it's school choice and circuit breaker um, so we're going to be spending uh, thirty million six hundred forty eight thousand dollars in this budget of which twenty six million dollars would come from um, City Hall before I go any farther anybody have any questions mr. De mr. Meyer um, I had a question on the school choice revolving account can you tell me why you don't have a projected revenue number for fiscal 15? So if you have you, know, you have revenue expenses for you know, the intake in 14 and then in 14 the expenses projected. And I'm just wondering, you only have the debit side up for that. The fund in City Hall will have a whole year in it. They'll have the extra $1.67 million, whatever we collect. But the way it's spent here is that goes on reserve, basically. We, okay. we spend in 15 the money we collect in 14 right. so this is the pot of money under circuit break I mean under uh, school choice that we would be dealing with okay. circuit breakers opposite we spend the money in the same year that we get it so but again if you went to uh, City Hall and looked at the books we'd have on to cherry sheet this year's revenue right. Right. okay um, and I just had a question about the fact that we are seeming to lean more heavily on school choice going into the FY15 budget. I'm just wondering what what's behind that. Um, on paper, <coughs> compared to last year's budget during budget time, it's about the same. But we are on track only to spend 1.2 million of the one point. I think it was almost 1.5 million. Um, I, th I think it was just a balancing act to spend what we could, get what we could in the budget, and still have the reserve. So I mean. It would just be a function of taking something out of the budget and and uh, adding to your school choice, if if you know what I mean. It was so. This was so. You think that 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 level of spending was depressed? Certainly, I mean, one the one point two five million was a bit lower, maybe, in order to build the reserves back up in prior use school choice. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Yeah, I just want I want to know what the uh, on this second second page, what is the what is medical therapy? Is that insurance? Or? That would be uh, medical uh, services like occupational therapy, physical therapy, things of that nature, speech. Okay, so this, that's a, that's within the special education, right? Yeah. And I just had one more, which was I'm just looking at the budget for fiscal fourteen. We had school choice funds of 1.46, and we're expending 1.25. Were these was that 1.46 million that was basically programmed into the budget, or was that 
at, at your budget, the way I understand it, that was part of the big plan. We didn't require, we were able to spend some things from the budget that were scheduled to be uh, paid from school choice. So we didn't. So was this, does this have anything to do with the, um, the personnel reserve that was set aside and so? Partially. Okay. Yeah. I see the personnel reserve is in the adjusted, and I guess my last question would be, there's the unadjusted budget, fiscal 2014 adjusted budget. I'm assuming the unadjusted budget is the one that was voted in July that the adjusted would show transfers between accounts right. to date. Right. Okay. And we had to take some of that money to spread uh, as the contracts all right. get settled. Right. Other comments or, or questions about the budget? Okay, uh, the, next, the next thing in the pack is a, uh, it's a spreadsheet, I know it's kind of small, but I have to get it all on a couple of pages, that details all the use of these outside funds and where it will be spent at what school and for what service. Um, and again, it's a little over $4 million and it details, again, if you were to look at the, uh, the uh, school choice in the first column on the last page, that's the $1.6 million I alluded to before. But here it, it actually details at which school and for which service um, it, it, it will be used. And actually it does it for all the revolving funds and all the grants, where they're going to be spent and, um, and what they're going to be spent on. So that should tie back into the other thing. And then it's just basically a, a line item budget, I think, in the way you're accustomed to seeing it, um, school by school that falls. And uh, I mean, you can get into that as, as deeply as, as you want. Um, but again, it all, this is the program, school by school, and it's all detailed um, in total on that second page that we had just looked at. So I don't know what anybody wants to do about going through all that. But. So, comments about the, uh, the, the the line item portion of the budget. I think everyone is shocked because it's such well, a different situation from what I understand you had I, to deal and with. I, and I guess I, I guess I would just maybe comment a little bit um, about the thought process because I know. People may be wondering, you know, how, why, why this change. Um, you know, when we put together the plan for the for the for the override, the proposal for the override was based on a four-year plan, and that we would um, try to build in some targets for what we could fund, not just in not just to save services in the current fiscal year, but to try to create a sustainable trajectory over the next three years. And so, um, we started with asking. Uh, the school department to do between two and a half to three percent as kind of the starting point because we still had a number of issues that we needed to be able to, you know, we're waiting for school aid we were waiting for health care we we're waiting for a couple of other numbers and so those the, in, in between those conversations with the superintendent and, and mr. Scott those numbers were starting to take more shape so that's how we were able to get to where we think um, is a comfortable percentage which is that three point four percent um, which is within the, you know, within the sort of five, that giant piece of cardboard that's hanging in my office that I took all around during the override. It fits within that framework. Um, and we're still going to be able to finish the, as part of our budget, we're going to be putting almost a half million dollars into a fiscal um, stability fund, which was part of the plan that will help extend the life of the override. Um, so, um, and again, I, I think the other key thing, my takeaway in, in looking at the list as it was being presented to me, I mean, these are items, um, you know, these are not, uh, you know, these are not sort of luxury things that are being added. These are things that we should be putting in our budget. These are things that are, are dealing directly with it, key issues in our schools, you know, not the least of which is our efforts to, um, to raise our, our um, schools up uh, you know, out of level three, the two schools that are in level three, um, so that we can return to being a, a level a level one district. So I view these as um, I think we have to 
I know the newspaper this morning was talking about how we're adding and adding and adding, but if you look at what's been cut over time, we're, we're trying to just sort of eke our way back. Mm -hmm. um, and I think these are some, if you look at the actual, uh, the positions that are being um, added, I thank the superintendent and the alt team for I, what I know was a difficult <coughs> process to really try to uh, look at across all the buildings and work collaboratively to figure out what are the key things that need to be put back in. So. Um, so that's that's sort of the rationale for how we came uh, to, to to the 3.4 percent number, um, and uh, and so that's if there's questions about that. So um, I guess with the structure of the override, there was a desire to build up the reserves, and then there was the override reserves. There was an additional set aside. That was the fiscal stabilization right. fund. Right. Yeah, um, and so. I guess there was supposed to be a separate vote if the city council was to draw on those funds. Was that the? Uh, it's not that it's a separate vote. It's just that it's a, a recognition. Yeah, it requires a two-thirds vote to take money out of stabilization. So it, it would require me to actively take money out of stabilization. So this this budget does not require the city to. It doesn't, that. and actually, the 15 budget will be adding money to that fund. The plan was we put money in. We'd establish the fund in 15. Uh, in 14, we'd add to it in 15. We'd continue to add to it in 16, and then um, potentially then need to start drawing down on it in 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 16 to stay on in 17 to stay on that glide path. My hope, actually, um, and we're still continuing to look at the numbers. I'm actually hoping we can add more than we had projected potentially. Because the goal, I mean, my goal would be to extend it beyond just that four years. Because as you know, the 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 2.5 million dollar question last time was, well, what happens after a year? You know, once we get to the fourth year, um, and so the goal, my stated goal all along was, I I, would, I don't want to, you know, I want us to see if we can extend that model longer, whether through finding other savings, whether through new revenues, whether through, you know, the state finally uh, funding us adequately. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's that's my hope. Yeah. But we're, we're right now we're following the plan. We're not having to tap into any of those reserves. Um, and we're still also trying to maintain city reserves as well so that we can keep our, our recently upgraded bond rating um, strong. So. And could you give the committee a sense of the budget that we're looking at is the appropriation plus grants plus anything we might produce from revolving funds. But we all know that there's additional funds that are expended. In exactly. The purpose of running the schools that appear, if you look at the end of your report, those are all detailed in. I yeah. think that's an additional $12 million up to Something on that order, yeah. yeah. So I'm just mean. wondering, we're, you know, we're sitting here looking at a 3.35% increase, and I'm just wondering from the the larger perspective, what growth is the city looking at if we include all those additional costs that are part of running the system? You mean in terms of what does the school increase represent? Right. If you take, yeah, yeah if, I mean, if we're looking at next year's end of year report yeah. and building in all the costs that are taking place, not in front of us on this budget, are mm -hmm. they commensurate with that 3.35 or could they be more if we look at Potentially slightly more, but I, I can't give you an exact number. Yeah, I'm, I, we're, I'm st we're still so in deep, deep looking at all the other budgets. I, I, I can give you an answer for the next meeting or between now and then. No, I'm just, yeah, yeah, I'm just that. curious because, yeah. again, that's something that a lot of people aren't aware of when they look at the school budget. No doubt about it. There's a larger, there's a larger you know, yeah. relative services. And some of this is also, I mean, we, we were, um, some of the original, you know, that projection, that sheet that I have, you know, actually hope to do actually more, but because some of the other healthcare numbers came in a little higher, state aid remarkably came in even lower than our really conservative estimate. So some of the numbers moved, um, but but I'll, I'll try to get that number so we can fill out that picture. But in other budget areas, we're trying to in our general fund departments, we're trying to stay within those parameters that we laid out in that. Um, you know, cultural and recreation services, we targeted a, like a 2.7% growth factor. Public safety was a little bit over 3%. Um, public works, the same. General government was, I think, 2.5% or 2.75%. So I think we're, we're going to be able to stay within all those parameters as well as make the, um, 
you know, put some funds into our into rebuilding our stabilization accounts. So, but I can I can that's a good point, and I'll try to find that statistic. Yeah. Other comments or questions? I would only have to say that um, for those new members that have joined us this year. Um, to sit here and discuss the budget as we're <laughs> discussing it this evening is something that hasn't happened in my six years, and wow. I was quoting the paper saying that today. Mm -hmm. And to say it to each one of you here tonight, I'd like to say it to you publicly because um, this is really something that we as an entire city should be proud of. Um, the folks came out and voted for an override. Um, our mayor had a vision as to how to uh, bring it forth to the people of Northampton in a way in which they understood the money would be um, seen and over seen in, in a fiscally responsible way with a vision and I think what we've heard from the mayor tonight that um, we're on track to spend this money out for the next several years in a way in which we should be able to continue to fund schools well and continue to add to the stabilization fund to try to stretch this out even farther is a testament to um, to our mayor and to the people of Northampton for how they value education and the services that um, we so desperately want for all of our citizens of Northampton. So um, I'm, I'm happy to be here with you tonight to be able to share this excellent news because for the, the rest of us, we've oftentimes come here and there's been kind of a cloud that's overhung of the meetings and, and that really has been lifted. And, um, and so it's a wonderful thing to be able to be part of uh, such a community and such a government that um, is fiscally responsible and open to be able to um, bring funds forward in order to maintain services that we treasure here in Northampton. So uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Superintendent, for working so hard on this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Don, for coming in and helping. And um, I think we all have something really here special and we can really be proud of. Mr. Ball. Um, yeah, I just wanted to thank Mr. Scott for the um, clarity. And it, this is wonderfully put together, and it's very easy to read. And I just want to thank you for coming in and helping us out and, and doing that for us. So thank you very much. It looks excellent. Other comments? Danny? So um, you'll have to indulge me because I, I try very hard with the school choice, you know, with things that are paid sort of. I know the school choice, they count up the days at the end of the year and then provide it to you. And I, I mean, the distinction between prior year school choices, which is what you um, reported in the past. But I just want to go back to um, the projected uses in fiscal 15 of $1.637 million. And we're, we're taught, you know, if I were to use a, a similar number for revenue in fiscal 15 to the one that's projected um, for of $1.35 million, I'm looking at that gap there. Um, and I'm just wondering if, I, if I'm, if i and again, we don't know what that school choice number is going to be because it obviously it involves the decisions of families from sending districts from our district as well. Are we looking at potentially seeing that $327,000 number decline significantly unless we make some other decisions um, within the budget? Again, going back, going back to your guideline, and I think with something we've tried to maintain as a school committee of having, you know, some reserve to deal with contingencies during the school year. Um, I think that the projection on the revenue for the current year is going to be a little light. There's a thing called a SPED increment that you get, you get five thousand dollars per student, and then an increment to pay for all the SPED costs. Mm -hmm. I that number wasn't available when I did this, so I didn't count it very highly. Okay. So I really think that your three hundred thousand dollars is going to be quite possibly okay. uh, be more than that. So, but yeah, I mean, the theory is right that we are using a little bit more. Okay. But I kind of backed into it because of the balance that I felt was appropriate to have on hand. Mm -hmm. Right. And just kind of worked it backwards for this particular year. But okay. if things did go backwards on your school choice numbers, um, I mean, you could be facing you know a hundred thousand dollars to do move around a little bit and use less next year it's 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 kind yeah, of a moving forward. target yeah, as no, it were looking forward into fiscal so I'm already thinking about fiscal 16 I mean really because you know fiscal 15 is here it's just 
teacher. You know, mm -hmm. fiscal, you know where, is, where is that prior year school choice? I know that it was as high as $600,000 within the tenure of some people in this committee, and it went down to Zero. essentially Zero. nothing, right. which we felt uh, very uncomfortable with. And, and again, it, as the mayor, you know, working with the city budget, was in a similar situation to where free cash was to nothing. And again, it's not, not the way to run a system effectively. You got to bear in mind, too, though, that you do have a whole year on reserve. Um, you, you choose not to, and I right. think it's a good idea not to do that. But I mean, it could ease the the strain should it decline in such a way that it, it was hurtful. Right. You do have 1.6 million dollars you can get your hands on. Right. So. Thank you, Mr. Moore. This is, a, I think, a question probably for the superintendent. Just could you tell us what, what tiered support specialists do? I could a big part of this budget, but you know exactly what is the job. Yeah. Um, there is a new law that was passed last year. It will go into effect July 1st of this year. It's called Chapter 222. It's a discipline law. And basically what it says is that we need to provide um, education for all students who are either suspended or expelled. It's no longer just special education students. It also indicates that um, if we have students who are being suspended, for instance, and they need to, um, there needs to be uh, formal letters sent to parents and there needs to be a meeting scheduled. Um, and if the parent is not able to come in for three days, the student has to be in school those three days. And we need to provide education. So basically what we're looking at is two elementary um, specialists to uh, be split among the four schools. So they'll have two and a half days in each school basically. Um, and also one at JFK. The way we're doing it with JFK is we currently have such a re-engagement center or um, an in-school suspension room, whichever you'd like to call it, uh, which is manned by an ESP. Um, the new law says that the person doing that has to be a certified teacher. So we're adding some funds to that position we currently have to make that a certified teacher. So basically these people uh, will be working with students um, who are um, not able to be in the classroom but yet need educational services. And um, we would also look to have those people, if there's no one in those rooms at that point, to work with regular ed and special ed teachers in, ter in terms of tiered intervention uh, with those students who need it. So if we're spreading these people out, um, I, I think that they will be more than busy <laughs> in the things that need to be done. What is, what is tiered intervention? What is tiered intervention is trying to keep kids out of the needs for special education services so that you can work in one-to-one -one or small groups and provide uh, different needs, different programs, different uh, interventions to help students um, become more on track with their learning. So we sort of ratchet it up. We try different things for a period of time. If it doesn't work, we try something else, et cetera, before we go to the special education um, qualifications. Thank you. Question mm -hmm. um, following up on that. Mm -hmm. So, um, And how much money did the state give us as part of well, this Well, I, I might say that this is another unfunded mandate. Yeah. And um, I might also say that this is still um, a very difficult situation to handle because we don't have one full time in each of the elementary schools and when we don't have this person, it goes back to the principal having to do this. And as you know, we don't have assistant principals in the schools. So it really um, is going to be quite difficult. Um, but we really felt we needed to start at a limited number and hopefully this is going to do the trick and if not you may hear next year that you need um, more help with that depending on how that runs. Mr. Ball. So the kids that um, are they on 504s or IEPs or are we trying to avoid no. that it's just discipline issues that we're talking about right? They could not be those. or not be. Um, okay. These are students who for one reason or another would be facing <laughs> suspension or um, expulsion. Okay. Or, um, you know, there, there's been sort of um, an unwritten um, situation where at the elementary level, particularly at the lower level, if you have students who are having a bad day and unable to really be in classrooms, et cetera, we've often called parents and said, would you like to pick him up or her up for the afternoon and come back to school tomorrow? We're no, able, no longer able to do that. They have to stay in school. 
that's part of the issue. Thank you. Mr. Shaw. I think this is a question for the superintendent. Um, just looking at some of the line items that have gone up um, the most, and one is classroom technology, which is great, classroom instructional technology. <coughs> Can you give some specifics on what that might mm -hmm. include? Yes, I can. Um, our student reporting system is new this year. It's Aspen, and we need additional software to man that system. So, so that's included in instructional technology? Aspen is included? That's included in the front page, the additional items under your supplies and I'm looking at the, this, this line item, classroom instructional technology. Right. I believe that's um, 2,000 in each of the schools. Is that true? Yeah, this says there's a no. eighteen thousand dollar increase going into the budget, which is again I'm all for it. I was just curious about yeah. what that might entail and I can Is that under a particular school or in general? No, no it was in the, the second page of the packet. Okay. In one instance we're we're adding to the teaching for technology. We're putting a, a second person in. Mm -hmm. So there'll be two divided among the four elementary schools. We're doing that. Um, Don, do you know what we're talking about here? I don't think it was nothing from the front page. We do, did no, have a $45,000 no, no. front page. It was just beefing up, I think, to um, get some su supplies and things of that nature to the teacher. Okay. There, there used to be, um, I think some of that money used to be in a district-wide account. And um, our director of technology felt that each school should have their own um, amount mm -hmm. and some of that is also going to be used in terms of the web pages and getting those done there's a stipend in there for people to do those web pages for each of those schools okay. best I can tell you but I can get more specifics for you and I'll send it to you okay. thanks mr. ball so is that why the um, teaching is increased by 4.25 is because of the technology and also because of the unfunded mandate um, for the mm -hmm. team specialists is that yes most of the items on the um, front page are positions um, we've also added uh, a half-time sped teacher for Ryan Road we've added um, um, a speech language teacher at Leeds going from 0.6 to 0.8 we've added uh, another uh, 0.33 for the technology and video instruction at the uh, high school um, and a reading interventionist. This is an ESP that was not uh, in the budget currently that will be uh, also for Ryan Road. We have an elementary technology specialist, which I've mentioned, which will, we have one now. This will be two uh, to be shared by the four elementary schools. We're also looking to increase our, um, the attendance and social worker time. She's currently 0 0.60 here. We're looking to have her full time. There's a tremendous need for that in our system. And um, so all of those are really um, positions. Uh, very little is in terms of um, additional supplies, software, and licensing. And that far right column gives you the total FTEs, mm -hmm. the 6.43 right. FTEs. Other questions? Oh, sorry, Dan. So I just wanted to... Um, Make sure I heard the superintendent correctly that uh, that those tiered support specialists will have a dual role. One is to meet the requirements of Chapter 223, right. but they will also be providing um, tiered support as part of the, the tiered support model. Right. It has if, nothing to do with discipline, but has to do with right. you know, effective teaching model. But we also want to make sure that people understand they're just not going to sit there if there's no kids in the room. Right. They're going to be busy and they certainly have things that they need to do and these are some of the things that the principals feel very strongly about that we don't have enough intervention and we could use these people doing it because we'll be looking for certified special education teachers. Yeah. Other questions or comments? So the th I think the the thought process was this but this meeting was scheduled as a so for for sort of deliberation for presentation with the goal that you'd have the committee would have some time to then mull this all over you know hear from constituents uh, with a goal of then taking a final vote at your next meeting your next regular meeting in April um, which is in time for the deadline of April 15th to get the budget to me um, and then I have another month to put that together with the whole city budget so 
Um, so really the purpose uh, tonight was to do that. And I'm assuming we can put these materials up on the website mm -hmm. so that residents will have right. a chance to review them between now and then and give you feedback on it. Um, thinking we won't get too many complaints, as many, <laughs> there won't be too many complaints per se. But uh, so that's sort of the thought process. I don't mm -hmm. know if folks have other questions tonight or if there's additional information they'd like to have between now and next meeting um, to, to answer any questions. I would, I would only say that if as you look through this, if you have questions, please feel free to either contact Mr. Scott or myself. We'd be happy to respond to them. Mm -hmm. I have one more, just one of these questions about what is. Uh, technology specialist, is, is that, um, I'm assuming, I figure it has to be technology. Is, is, on, is it across the board, like the educational component or the maintenance of hardware component? No. What, what sort it's, of role is it? It's um, a match to the person we have currently and what, they, what it's for is to directly teach students and to work with teachers on technology. So it's a teaching position. I have one more question. Is there anything that didn't get into the budget that we're, um, that we really, really, you know, we're going to still work for? I mean, is this, because it seems to me to be a really nice full budget. I love what we added in because I hated mm -hmm. taking out things. Um, is there anything else that we really had to cut that we are missing? We did not cut anything. I mean, I mean, um, I mean not choose not to add back in is what I meant to say. Pardon. We prioritized as an administrative team with all the principals and, and others present to come up with these items, and I, I have to say that we're very grateful um, for the additional funds that we have. Um, I do not want to appear ungrateful. Are there still needs in your district? Yes. Um, there are still needs that are out there, and I do have a whole list, but I don't really want to talk about those. Yeah. Um, but please be aware that when you do next year's budget, it's not like this is it and you've got everything back. I mean, you're, you're still missing, in general, um, some things that, that we feel are really important. But we prioritized and we think that these are the most important for this year. Okay, well, thank you. And uh -huh. no, I don't want to appear negative either. And I'm very, very appreciative, so much so that it kind of felt a little bit euphoric and I wanted to make sure, you know, to have my feet on the ground a little bit. Right. But that's great. I mean, okay. it's wonderful. Uh, yes, I don't want to muddy the waters and this might be just as a new person. I'm cognizant of us voting on this on April 10th and also about transportation costs. Mm -hmm. So this is not including any additional cost for busing. This is correct. I believe it's the it meets the contract. 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 Okay. Which is sixty thousand so addition. There is a sixty thousand okay. increase, yeah. but that was always anticipated. Okay. So okay. yeah, but it's basically level service of of our current transportation mm -hmm. system. Okay. Um, yeah. So if there's no other comments or questions, um, I guess I would just remind folks that uh, we have, um, we'll be together again on Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday. We have our special school committee meeting at 715 in city council, in city council chambers. Got to make sure okay. um, to, to remind people that it's in council chambers. Um, uh, then the next, uh, there's a conference committee meeting on April 8th at 4.30 here at JFK, and then the next regular school committee meeting will be on April 10th, uh, 2014. Um, I would also just remind um, the many folks who are watching this at home uh, live that we do have the, um, the public meetings tomorrow um, here at JFK with the superintendent candidates beginning at 3.30. Um, and go in sort of one hour increments um, uh, with each one of the three candidates. So members of the community who want to have an opportunity to come and meet and interact with those candidates can do that here um, tomorrow afternoon at 3.30. So at JFK? Here at JFK, okay. in this room in the community center, community room. So um, those are the uh, future business and meeting dates and uh, I would now entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. To adjourn? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The meeting is adjourned.